you are 18 years old and you're told that you could be dead within 14 days. You're told that everything you've been taught to strive for, the whole idea of a house and a job and a family, you're told that that might never be yours. You're told that everything you assumed would always be yours, no matter what. Things like the embrace of your girlfriend or spending time with people who are important to you or even something as simple as the feeling of sunshine on your face. You're told that those might not be yours to feel any longer because now you are in an arena fighting the biggest battle you will ever fight for the most valuable prize that there is. And that's not unique or uncommon. Many people enter that arena every day, but there are only a limited number of spaces available on the other side. Not everyone will come through. You've got an advantage, you're young and you're fit, but then again, you can't take that for granted either. So, where do you go from there? You go to the bone marrow transplant unit at Christchurch Hospital to do battle. And while you are there, you see others on the same journey as you, battling around you. You see them thin and frail and, and bored and gaunt, shuffling down the corridor outside your window. And you're shocked by the sight of it, naturally. Everyone knows that feeling of seeing someone who is, is terribly sick. So you're shocked until you remember that that's what you look like as well. And then, then you're horrified. And it all becomes real about the same time you figure out why the person in the room next door has gone home from hospital and not come back. Or when you look into the eyes of your parents and you see that you know, really they're dying just as much as you are from this. Now anyone that has spent any amount of time in hospital knows just how boring it is. So. I don't actually have much to tell you about, about my time in hospital, but there were moments in there which, which taught me a lot. Taught me about myself, taught me about life, and taught me about death. And a lot of those things that I learnt have changed my life for the better by far, have made me a better person. And that is what I want to share with you here today. I used to hate all those cliches and bullshit just as much as you guys do about embracing each day, making the most of each day, living each day to the fullest, all of those. But now I've been through what I have, I realise that I only hated them because either I didn't fully understand them or I didn't believe them. And you know, I can forgive my past self for that. If I had have looked at the 100 days of chemotherapy that lay ahead of me at the start and, and all of the terrible medical procedures, then I wouldn't have got through it. By just focusing on today's chemo and ignoring the fact that there was more tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that, it made it all seem bearable somehow. What I have learned going through this, I guess, is, is there is a very definite formula for happiness. There is a set of instructions you can follow to, without a doubt, achieve happiness. The thing is, adversity is a given in life. Life has no smooth road for any of us and you will all go through some really tough things. But your happiness is hinged directly on your ability to recover from that and bounce back from that successfully and take lessons away from it. And you know, if that means that you have to make a conscious choice to, to not be broken by adversity and to instead come back stronger and better, then then so be it, make that choice. The formula for happiness is simply how quickly and successfully you can recover from the things which will go wrong in your life. It's only been about a year and a half since I was announced in remission, but already I begin to see the appreciation which me and my family developed for life begin to fade in us as we become more focused on day-to-day -day stuff. And that's fine, we all have to move on at some point. But I can honestly say that that's something I never want to let go of. I wake up every morning and I realize that I'm not in another goddamn hospital bed and I'm not in a box on the ground and I smile. Every day starts with me not being dead. And honestly, if you start every day like that, what can go wrong? 
And I know that you haven't all been through something like I have. Many, many of you will have. But for those of you that haven't, that is no excuse to not appreciate life to the fullest. We owe it to those people who can't go out there and live life to the max to, to do it on their behalf, to go and do all the things that they would want to do. I don't think you have to go through it. You just have to listen to someone that has and, and trust them and believe them when they tell you that it can happen to you, no matter how se secure your world may feel around you, and that you're lucky. So thank you all so much for having me today, guys. Please enjoy the rest of the conference and, and all the best. Cheers.